I would like to start uh, to begin with how uh, safe justice looks for LGBTI person in the example of experience uh, journey of one uh, victim of the crime and it's the ideal uh, which might be kind of a unicorn world, uh, not existent. Uh, at least I didn't hear in my experience that this kind of scenario happened. Uh, so we could imagine that uh, there's a transgender woman who is physically assaulted by a group of individuals because uh, who uh, she is. And uh, you, you don't have to imagine because it's happening every day. Uh, and then uh, what's the next step is that because campaign uh, by the government on the rights of the victim is always uh, happening and she's aware of her rights and she goes to report the crime to the police and I there she's provided with the information about her rights and uh, the support services available to her and including the option to seek medical attention, counseling, uh, mental health support. Uh, and next step is that Police uh, take reports seriously and investigate the crime, gather evidence and identify the perpetrators. And all the time, victim is kept informed about the progress of the investigation and is provided with the support throughout the process, uh, including safety planning and emotional support, which uh, Levent was talking, it's uh, right to protection. And uh, then cases then refer to the prosecutor and who works with the victim and to prepare her uh, for the trial and ensures that her rights are protected throughout the uh, uh, process. And the prosecutor also seeks to enhance uh, the punishment uh, for, uh, for the crime, uh, specifically because this crime was based on victims' gender identity and uh, perpetrator had the discriminatory motive. Uh, uh, the, and, and then trial proceeds smoothly and the victim is able to testify uh, and uh, provide evidence uh, without fear of uh, retribution and discrimination. Uh, and then uh, she also receives compensation. Uh, uh, and then following the trial, uh, victim is also provided with the support to recover uh, from the crime and its impact, including ongoing counseling and access to victim support services. The police and prosecutor also work to ensure that victim is not subjected to any further victimization or discrimination, including any harassment or retaliation from the perpetrators or uh, their associates, uh, even though perpetrators can end up uh, behind the bars, usually associate can also uh, pose the threat uh, to victims of crime. So uh, overall, this is the example of how and LGBTI, in this case, a uh, trans person, can access safe justice, uh, including support and protection they uh, need to report a hate crime, uh, participate in the criminal justice process, and recover from the crime. And uh, most importantly, the victim is treated with dignity and respect throughout the process, and their rights are protected by the criminal justice system. And uh, as uh, it was also highlighted by the Felipe that they're reintegrated back uh, to their uh, life uh, be w before uh, they faced the uh, faced the crime. Uh, but however, uh, there are lots of challenges uh, faced uh, by the LGBT victims of crime uh, in their journey to uh, achieve safe justice. Uh, so this can include, and it's not uh, only limited, but there is also other barriers. But I will stop on some of them. Uh, the one is the fear of reporting. Uh, LGBT victims of uh, crime may be afraid to report incidents to the police, particularly in those countries where the discrimination uh, is widespread and stigma exists against LGBTI community because police is also part from the community and they also share sometimes the prejudice the, uh, the wider uh, public has. And this uh, fear may be based on the past negative experiences uh, with authorities or lack of the uh, trust in the criminal justice or lack uh, of the information about their rights, uh, just to name a few. Uh, the second barrier or challenges is the lack of uh, awareness and understanding. Uh, so some uh, police officer and criminal justice professionals may not have adequate training on how to work with LGBTI victims of crime 
And this can also often result in insensitivity or lack of understanding uh, of the unique challenges uh, they face by the victims. Uh, and then it, uh, there's also secondary victimization when they finally report by the, uh, mm, by the police or other authorities. So uh, victims may feel uh, re-traumatized or experience secondary victimization during the reporting process or as their case uh, processes through the criminal justice system. And uh, this can occur if the f uh, victim feels that they are not being taken seriously, which is actually uh, uh, one of the top uh, replies why they, they do not report. Because uh, when you don't prosecute one or t uh, take serious uh, one reported crime, then what people do, you share with your family, you share with your friends that I reported but nothing is happening. Then if your friend will happen to be a victim of the crime, then of course you will remember about that story and then you don't report. Uh, and secondary victimization is not only about incorrect questions or uh, etc. but in cases of uh, example, transgender women, but police often, we hear that police often also misgender if they didn't uh, also go through the uh, legal gender recognition and which already uh, uh, stripped them from their dignity. Uh, so these are uh, some of the examples. Uh, and of course, uh, there's also limited access to support services. Uh, during the pandemic, uh, there was also, we, he we heard a lot about access of uh, trans people specifically, and in this case, transgender uh, women of uh, domestic violence being denied from the uh, single gender shelters, and uh, they couldn't access and they couldn't go anywhere. They were on the streets. Uh, so these are the some of the uh, um, yeah, and then uh, so if they also often do not go uh, to the uh, they don't have also counseling legal assistance. Uh, but I think it's not unique for only LGBTI, but it's uh, as we he hear from the other testaments that uh, this exists uh, when it comes to all victims of uh, crime. Uh, and uh, also further in the criminal justice system, uh, there's also discrimination and they can face discrimination not only from, for, from police officers, but prosecutors. Prosecutors sometimes treat hate crimes just, just uh, uh, ordinary crimes and do not take uh, bias motivation of the perpetrator. Uh, or even if prosecutors take, then judge uh, doesn't take. So it continues, uh, goes on. Uh, and uh, this discourages LGBTI people to actually to go and uh, try to access justice. Uh, so that's why it's important to address these challenges by providing adequate support, training, and also resources to ensure that LGBTI victim victims of uh, crime can access safe justice uh, and uh, also to to just go uh, go forward so that. Uh, the example I gave from the very beginning will become reality. So thank you for your attention.